Hey everybody, it's Joe. Thank you for tuning back in for part four of my multi-part series covering the construction of Tesla's lithium refinery plant near Corpus Christi, Texas. Now, if you've been watching my previous parts, you kind of have an idea of what we've covered to this point, but as a brief summary, part one talked about the location, why it was selected, and also some of the land purchases to support the construction and operation of the refinery. Part two talked about the large ponds that were constructed on the site and what their uses are. Part three talked about some of the construction techniques that are being used, including soil stabilization, peer selection, and also foundation construction. For this video, we're going to go more in depth about the actual design of the refinery itself. We're gonna be referencing Tesla's renderings and some of the information that they have provided in previous meetings. We're going to take a look at uh, some of the raw materials that are gonna be arriving and how that affects the design of the refinery itself. We're gonna be looking at some construction projects that are needed to support the operation of the refinery. And of course, we're gonna talk about some of the timelines associated with the construction and also the production of lithium here at the refinery. Now, before we get into the main video, I wanna take this opportunity to thank some of my Patreons for their outstanding help in putting together the information I used into this video. And these Patreons are Charles Keller, Desi Doolin, Harder NL, Patrick Kenny, Dennis Kelly, and also Chris Drysdale. So thank you very much. So without further ado, let's get into the video and we'll start with the uh, rendering of the site. And then we're gonna go through each individual section and we'll talk about uh, the purpose and how they're gonna operate. On the render, I've highlighted the first facility. This is number one, the raw materials receiving structure. And this is going to be processing the raw materials coming in from the ships and the rails. Now, it's very important to understand what kind of material is coming in. So let's listen to what Drew said at groundbreaking. Uh, there's a really good deep water port so we can bring in uh, the spodumene, which is the rock input uh, to this refinery from uh, you know all over North America through an easy path. And it's also directly on rail. Um, so we can also bring in the rock and the, send the outgoing product via rail. The, um, as we look forward into the future, obviously day one, it's designed for this spodumene concentrate. It's from hard rock mines. But as we start to have recycled batteries coming back, the, the factory is designed to be feed flexible. And so we'll be actually processing lithium out of black mass, uh, as well as from brine and clay operations that are also ramping up in North America. And so as we, as we view this site as uh, having a major focus on regionalizing the lithium supply chain, uh, it's all about being feed flexible and taking advantage of all of those feeds, including manufacturing scrap and end of life batteries. So as you heard from Drew and Turner, there is room for expansion of the type of operations here at their lithium refinery plant. But initially, the input raw material is spodumene concentrate. So let's talk briefly what that is. I'll do a deeper dive in spodumene in part six, but for right now, all you need to know is that spodumene is a lithium mineral derived from pegmatite rock. This is the chemical composition of the spodumene. It's lithium oxide, aluminum oxide, and silicon dioxide. These are images of what it looks like in raw form. For processing, the spodumene needs to be concentrated into something called spodumene concentrate 6, which is 6% lithium oxide by weight. And this is generally what it looks like in this form. For this discussion, what's most important is to understand that six tons of spodumene concentrate six is needed to make one ton of lithium hydroxide. That is done through various processes. Uh, some of them are kiln roasting or calcination, and also various other processes, all of which will be built into the refinery. The output is lithium hydroxide in high grade, and this is what it looks like with these images. We'll cover this much more in detail in part six of this video series. And one final data point that you may not be aware of is the output lithium hydroxide is really uh, an input to the battery cathode plant that's being constructed up at Giga Texas. And that will be used in addition to other materials such as nickel to make the battery cathode that is going into the production of the 4680 battery cells also at Giga Texas. I know that was a lot of information, but it's important to know what raw materials are coming into the refinery and why some of the structures such as this one here, the raw materials processing plant, would be needed for all of this material that you see here, which is the spodumene concentrate six or the alpha spodumene. 
The next part of the refinery I want to talk about is the rail line extension for that raw material delivery. And as Drew mentioned, it's very convenient. There is a rail that's already nearby, as you can see by the construction site. And it's important not only for the delivery of the raw materials, but also for them to take the byproducts of the process away from the refinery. So very convenient. The next feature of the refinery design is two parallel processing lines as indicated in the rendering. Now I'll show you these images here. This is a similar kind of plant down in Australia just to give you an idea of how this may look. But not only does this give uh, Tesla an increased capability of producing the lithium hydroxide, but it also gives them a nice redundancy uh, of the systems in case something were to go wrong. Now, also because of this design, it will relate to the process of construction of the refinery. And we'll talk about that in a later part of this video. I also want to show you these images that I took during my drone flight of the site. You can see all this construction underway. I'm indicating where this is in that rendering. What we're seeing is the actual mounts for that rotary kiln or the calcination machine that we talked about earlier, and also an innovative uh, heat exchange cooler system that they will have in place at this facility. And we'll talk about that in another part of this video series. Because of the two parallel lines, construction phasing is proceeding to get one of them completed as indicated by the end of 2023 with small scale production and testing early 2024. By the end of 2024, the rest of the facility should be completed and in 2025, production ramping up to full scale uh, capability. Let's hear what Elon said during groundbreaking. So we're gonna begin construction immediately. Um, we're aiming to uh, finish construction uh, next year and then reach uh, hopefully full production about a year later. That's, that's a, which is very, this is extremely fast by you know, normal, normal standards. Item number four is essentially just a warehouse with offices and testing facilities for the refinery. You can see where that's located on the render. The two structures at item number five is the semi-truck outbound pickup for the finished lithium hydroxide materials. This video clip gives you kind of an idea of how this would probably take place and how it would be packaged. And I have been able to confirm that they will be using semi-trucks for this material. Something not shown on the render, but I have been able to confirm a new electrical substation will be constructed on the site in Area 6 as depicted. And here's an example from Giga Texas, just so you have a reference of what a substation would look like. During my drone flight, I did notice that two of the transformers for this substation were already on site. And here is an overall picture of what this would look like. You can see where the transformers are. County Road 28, which uh, would be where the electrical tie-in and that future substation location. So pretty cool new information. So there you have it. I hope that you enjoyed that uh, fairly in-depth discussion about how the refinery is going to be constructed. What are the various facilities? What spodumene concentrate is? Why does that affect how they designed the refinery? Uh, also, how does it affect the product that they are going to be producing here at the factory as well? well? What are the various construction timelines and projects associated with the refinery? Now, in part five, we're going to talk a little bit more detail about some specific items within the uh, refinery itself, some kilns and some heat transfer coolers. So make sure you take a look at part five when it comes out. It should be coming out in the next few days. As always, thank you very much for your support. I very much appreciate it and it is extremely helpful and I hope that you found this information uh, educational and informative as well. So as always, thank you again and have a great day. Take care.